Hello, my name is Whitney. I'm with Blick Art Materials. And tonight we're going to be doing a project called Leave a Trail. And the idea there being we are leaving a paint trail and transferring it to the backside. Um, before I get started and talk about all the materials and the process, I want to remind everyone that we are doing a $100 e-gift card giveaway. And we've been doing this for a few months now, so pay attention, we're changing up our questions. And tonight, because we're making a book cover, I would like to know what is your favorite art book? Um, so maybe it's a, a catalog from a museum show that you saw and it was your favorite show, or maybe it's a, um, an instructional book, something about a how-to, or uh, maybe an artist biography. Um, I know I have a whole set of books that have been with me in every painting studio I've ever been in, and they're really like my, my studio friends. They're always there when I'm stuck and I can go to them. Um, so what is your favorite art book? And let us know, put it in the comments, and to be eligible for that $100 e-gift card, you'll also need to like this video and follow us on Facebook. Um, I do wanna also let you know about another contest we have going on. We have a pet portrait contest, and submissions are due by the 27th. So that is fast approaching. It's a pet portrait contest. Maybe your pet portrait ends up on a book cover. Who knows? Um, but that is a fun contest um, that you can check out on our website. All right, so let's get started with our Leave a Trail book covers. I have a little Moleskine here. Really, you can use any size sketchbook. I even have one here that I want to show you. You can use a spiral bound sketchbook. And actually, it really, when you wrap that with felt, it's really going to help protect that uh, wire binding. I know I'm pretty rough on my sketchbooks, and if I'm honest, a lot of my art materials, um, they get thrown in backpacks and to boxes and to bags that I take with me, and they get beat up pretty quickly. So this is a nice way to protect that wire binding, and you can even do this with a soft cover or paper cover sketchbook. I do want to point out, let me grab this one here. I'm jumping a bit ahead of myself here, but the way that these are attached is not permanent. So, I can take this off. There's no adhesive or glue there that you're sticking to the cover. So if you wanted to give, say, your favorite art book a nice new cover and a little makeover, you could certainly do that without altering its original cover. All right, so let's get started with materials. Um, just as a little reminder, we do have a full material list. And to access that, um, there is a link at the bottom of our description that you can click and it'll take it, it will take you to our website where we have the full material list. I am using Kunin Premium Felt. Now, I have learned not all felts are the same. This is actually a little bit thicker than what you would be getting from a craft felt. And I like that it gives a little bit more protection and it's also more rigid and it can be easier to work with in the end stages. Okay, so I'm just gonna set up my book here. I'm going to sort of guesstimate my registration. I know I want at least an inch that I can fold over. So I'm positioning it like so. Now you could use a pencil to make a mark. And it takes a little bit to mark on the felt. Um, 
but hopefully I have a contrast in color and you can see that. That's my outside registration mark. I'm going to mark where my binding starts. Now you could also use, this won't really show, the part gets folded into um, the inside of the book when we're finishing it up. Um, but if you are particularly particular and you like nice clean edges, I completely understand, you may want to use something like an artist tape and that will be able to be removed in the end. So you won't leave any marks. I'll go ahead and use that. It's a little easier to see on camera than the pencil too, probably. So I'm just marking off the area where my sketchbook is. I wanna know where to put my paint, basically. So there, and this is my binding. This is gonna take just a minute. Do we have any questions or any cool art books that have shown up in the response? A number of people have mentioned drawing on the right side of the brain. Yes. Um, so a number of people have mentioned drawing on the right side of the brain, and that is a classic. That is definitely on my bookshelf as well, yes. Chris loves John, her John Singer Sargent book on watercolors. Mm. John Singer Sargent's watercolors. Chris loves John Singer Sargent's uh, book on watercolors. His name is always a tongue twister to me, but fantastic watercolors. I agree with you, Chris. All right, just two more pieces here. I'm just gonna show the corner. Okay, so now I know this is the area that I will want to put tape, uh, paint in. And this tape mark here shows where the spine of my book is. And I'm actually going to leave my book here, pull this over, and I'm just gonna make a little mark with my pencil on the corner. Let me pull that in so you can see. And this is going to be my little registration mark. I can put a piece of tape here as well. This will show me where to fold when transferring the image. It might sound confusing right now. It's gonna make sense in a moment, I promise. Okay, so I have the Marabou Fashion Liner these are a fabric paint. Uh, they are permanent when heat set, but I'm not really anticipating that um, I'll be putting this in water per se or needing to wash my cover. But it certainly doesn't hurt to have a permanent paint. And what shall I do here? I'm just gonna do a little decorative. Ooh. Now this right here, what happened where it spilled out really fast, that is a good teaching point. Um, it's always good to have a blotter paper to the side where you can test and see how the flow of your color is. I am just going at this freehand, so. Now, um, it's important to note that like I said, I am doing this freehand. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to do this freehand. Uh, with lighter colors of felt, I've found I could actually hold up the felt to uh, a window, a sunny window, with a paper behind with a drawing. Um, I did outline that drawing in a Sharpie, but it did show through the felt. It sort of has almost, 
open weave is the wrong word, but there's, there's a looseness to how all the fibers are held together. So I was able to see through that. Now, of course, if I was using a black felt or maybe even a dark gray, it, it would not work as well. And this is pretty straightforward process. Do we have any questions, Julie? No. All right, no questions. No, but we've heard uh, some great books. Ooh, great books. Yes. All right. The Joy of Zentangle is Heidi's favorite. The Joy of Zentangle is Heidi's favorite. And Karen likes drawing hands. I love that you like that book, Karen. I, I know we probably have a few teachers out there watching and hands, how do you draw hands? They're always the most complicated. We all have them and we all see them every day. And yet, at least speaking for myself and for a number of students I've had, we are terrified of drawing them. It's, it's one of those things, right? Um, I've seen it in classes all over the place. Um, so that is great that you are, you have that. It's a really good resource. I'm just gonna keep going with my paint. And notice I am on the right side of my felt. It really doesn't matter which side you do your initial drawing on you could choose to do the left. Um, the right side will be the front cover. So I choose that side just because um, it'll have a little bit more color to it in the end. We'd like to hear a little bit more about the paint. Oh yeah, um, we'd like to hear a little bit more about the paint. And this is Marabou Fashion Liner. It is a fabric paint. Um, as you can see, it's in a squeeze bottle here, and um, it becomes permanent when heat set. Uh, so this could be used in a number of fabric projects. I also have with me um, this lovely little thing. Now this, I've used these in so many projects, um, and so many projects that I've presented even, so it might seem a little bit old hat, uh, but I'm going to talk about them just a little bit because I love them so much. These are Mako's uh, Detailer Riders, and there is an ER on there, I'd like to note. It's not me. Um, <laughs> that is <laughs> their uh, titling there. Um, moving forward, I'll just refer to them as Detail Riders, uh, so it sounds a little bit more clear. But these are amazing for a number of projects. I have a bunch of bottles here that I have just filled with Blitkrylic. And I do have um, both the Detail Riders and Blitkrylic listed as an optional material on our materials list. Um, these give you a nice range of colors. If you're wanting to mix a color, um, these you can't really mix inside the bottle necessarily. Um, so if I wanted a different color or if I were using, say, that black felt that I was talking about before, um, I would want a more opaque paint. And that's where the um, Blitkrylic would come in. Angel would like to know if Sharpie would work on felt for details. Angel would like to know if Sharpie would work on the felt for details. Um, yes, however, I'm gonna skip to the fun part here and show you why I wouldn't use Sharpie for this project, even though it will write on the felt. All right, I'm just gonna flip this right over. Remember when I made that registration mark? And for those of you familiar with printmaking, you'll know what I'm doing here. I lined up the outside and I'm pressing from that outside edge 
into the center. I'm just gonna give it a good press here. And I'm using a little bit of pressure, um, not a ton. I'm not gonna suddenly become breathless up here or anything, but just enough pressure. You can see a little bit has come to the back side. That's okay. And when I open that up, I have the mirror image. Now you can see I actually apparently didn't precisely follow my registration mark, but that's okay. Just gonna move that little piece of tape. And I can even add a little extra paint to this side. There we go. And that can also be done if you find that it doesn't transfer um, as clearly or the color isn't as uh, opaque as you would like it on the second side. You can always go over it, um, no matter which paint you're using, and give it a little bit more detail. So that's the basic process. Um, do you want to note, uh, you would want to stay away from words or letters uh, just because they would print in reverse on the back side. Maybe that's something you want, in which case, please do that. Um, and I have one of those names where my initials work either way, so I could do that if I wanted to, um, but I'm just as a general note. Uh, you could also wait until the very end and I could put my name here and not press it. All right. Uh, before I move on, I just want to note, because I anticipate there might be some questions about it, I can do this multiple times on the same piece, assuming that I always line up to that exact same registration mark then I don't even have to wait for the paint to dry. Now, if you're working with littles, little kiddos, um, I think we know their registration might look something like this, <laughs> um, unless helped, so you might wanna do that all in one go, just to get a good clean print and have them have a successful project, or wait until your paint has dried to print again. I'm just gonna set this aside. And I do have a dry piece here. So this is on the gray felt. And I had just a bit of metallic. Size it to your book. Again, I am, um, doing the very technical thing of guesstimating. I'm laying my book on top of where the image is. And I'm just gonna fold the sides, do a little, almost like a pizza flip, and then fold my sides in. And this can still be adjusted later, so nothing is set in stone. And it does help, though, if you have some binder clips. I just want to remind everyone to be eligible for our $100 e-gift card. You will need to uh, like this video and follow us on Facebook and also let us know what your favorite art book is. We have been changing up our questions, so I'll just say it again. What is your favorite art book? Okay. Judith yeah. was wondering if you could use a stencil to create a little fabric. Of course, yes. Judith is wanting to know, can you use a stencil to create the pattern? Definitely, of course. Um, yeah, and there are a lot of really beautiful, intricate stencils out there. I could see laying down a stencil, going over it with um, the bottle, or 
Um, you would still want to use a bottle and not a brush, uh, just so the paint is thick enough to transfer to the other side. But stencil, definitely. Okay, so now that I have this sized, and you can make your images as complicated or as simple as you want. So I'm just testing out my sizing. I'm gonna throw a binder clip on. And I'm actually going to show you all uh, two different ways that this can be closed off. Now this first way that I'm going to do here, that is what I've done in this sketchbook. Pull this forward. So I have a pocket here, and that's where it folds in. Let me bring that to the center. And the rest of the felt stays um, folded underneath and behind the sketchbook and it stays by just slipping into that pocket. Any questions, concerns, favorite books? We do have some love for Walter Foster books. Ah, we have some love for Walter Foster books. I, a personal story here, um, I love the Walter Foster books, and back in the day when you would get the little scholastic mailers from school, I would like mark every page, um, but they had the Walter Foster how to draw books, and there was a whole series, like I was totally floored. My kindergarten self was amazed that there could even be that many drawing books. And I flagged every single one. I wanted all of the Walter Foster how to draw books. There was one on trains and cars and planes and cats and dogs and birds and people. And I, I got that entire collection. I was obsessed with them. And I would just trace them, the images. I don't even know that I actually followed along on the directions. I would put a piece of paper on top and I would just trace. So there you go. <laughs> Lots of good memories. Good memories. Oh yeah. Books are good at bringing back good memories. So while I was talking about that, all I was doing was threading a needle here. And I do want to point out this is a blunt tip needle. And I'm going to use a smaller size, but I know that we do have some teachers out there and some folks at home working with young kids. So I do also want to let you know these plastic needles. Sometimes they're referred to as yarn needles. You can see they're very bendy. These will actually go through the felt. So sometimes it takes a little muscling it through. I find if I twist it, felt is almost porous, I guess I would want to say. Like you can, you can feel it move um, when you pull at it. So it makes room for that needle, even though it's both plastic and blunt. So that is a good option for you if you're wanting to sew, but you wanna make sure everyone's fingers stay safe. I will say even the metal ones, they're pretty safe, but you might not wanna give them to someone very young. And I'm just going to do a couple of little whip stitches just at the end here. And it really doesn't take much. I'm just gonna do one. And again, the felt is thick, so it may take a little of that uh, twisting motion. You don't really want to push, just kind of twist it through. And pull that tight and just make a 
easy knot. Cindy would like to yeah. know if the cover is removable and can be used, reused. Yes, Sandy would like to know, is the cover removable and can it be reused? Most certainly, Sandy. So you may have missed where this one here, just sort of uh, almost make a diamond shape, pull this up, and it'll slide right into this pocket. And that's what I'm sewing on the end here. So you can remove this. If you're putting this onto your favorite book, it's not going to damage the cover. There's no adhesive involved. There's no, um, no uh, permanence to it unless you want there to be. All right. I'm going to put a quick stitch in here, and while I do that, I just want to remind everyone, enter to win our $100 e-gift card giveaway. And all you need to do to enter is like us, like this video, and follow us on Facebook, and let us know what your favorite art book is. Oh. And that's the importance of doing a double knot, everyone. <laughs> I tried to be quick so I didn't bore you with my bad sewing. But as we all know, sometimes when we try to do things quickly, it doesn't work out better. Life lessons. All right. There we go. And just one more to hold it. Now, of course, if you're not worried about pricking your fingers or anything like that, if you are an adult who is very capable of doing a couple of stitches, you can certainly use a pointed needle and it would be a lot easier. So I'm just gonna snip that off and take off my binder clip. And you can see it's starting to look a little bit like a book cover. Now I would repeat that for the back side, um, although I did tell you I would show you a modification. With this, you can see, and maybe let me grab a finished example for you. You can see that the top and the bottom isn't actually covered. So if you are like me and you're really rough on your sketchbooks or you have your favorite book that you really want to protect that edge, there is a way to do that. And I'm not going to sew it up because we got that part down, I think. But there's just a really easy trick of cutting your felt. So I am, again, I'm kind of just guessing at where that binding edge is. I'm lining it up. I'm right-handed, so hopefully my left hand isn't in the way there, folks. Sorry. No way around it. Just make a little snip. And then cut all the way up. Now I can open up this piece. This stays behind and underneath the binding. And I would attach it essentially in the same way, but I'm able to fold this part over as well. So I'm covering all the sides of my book. And again, you're going to want a binder clip to make beautiful, perfect square corners. And I would do that same little whip stitch there, flip it over, 
can do it on the other side. So that's just one way that you could modify it. Um, there's really a lot you could do. You could make another cut, so this lovely um, elastic piece could still work. You could add beads, you could add embroidery. Um, you could really do a lot with it and take it wherever you want. Um, there are no rules and it's your book cover, so you can make it um, exactly how you want it and to suit your needs best. So I've been reminding you a lot tonight to enter to win. Um, go ahead and get those last entries in. Let us know what your favorite art book is. Maybe it's a catalog or a how-to, those Walter Foster books. Um, yeah, maybe it's uh, a classic that you can just always go back to when you're stuck on a painting or a project or you kind of want to get out of your head. Um, but let us know what that is to enter to win. And while you're submitting those, I do want to show off this little book. And it might not be terribly apparent, but I only painted the gold here. So all of this yellow, that's actually the print of a fabric. I took an old pillowcase and used that to create my cover. There, maybe you can see a little better. That is the print of the fabric. So you could play around with different fabrics, found fabrics, denim. Um, the felt is really great because it's thick enough to pad your cover. Um, so you can really toss it around and keep it protected. Uh, but if you want to play with different patterns and prints, that's really fun, too. Susan was wondering yeah. about using canvas. Oh, of course. Susan was wondering about using canvas. You could definitely use canvas, Susan. Definitely. Yeah, and canvas has great sort of natural water wicking abilities, so might actually give it a little extra protection if you're in a rainy, damp climate. <laughs> and we, Any? we had a question yeah. about uh, the thickness of the thread that you were using. Oh, yes. We had a question about the thickness of the thread that I was using. I'm just using um, an embroidery floss. Really, um, even a thinner thread, um, something that you would just use to uh, sew a button back on, something really thin, that would work as well. It's not doing a whole lot of work, it's just tacking it in. Um, and it doesn't need to be anything too strong or crazy to do that. Um, and also, I just did the one little stitch. You could stitch all the way across, you could add extra embroidery with it. Um, you could try to hide it by using a thinner thread. That would sort of be absorbed in the fibers of the felt. Or you could use, um, really, if you had a needle with a larger hole like this one, you could even use yarn. Um, why not? This is your book cover. All right, do we have a winner? We do. We have Kimberly Goodman. You are the winner of our $100 e-gift card. To claim that prize, you have 24 hours to private message us. Let us know you're the winner and uh, we'll get that to you and you can enjoy your new supplies. I do also want to remind everyone the pet portrait contest that is uh, Submissions are due by the 27th, and who doesn't want to paint a portrait of their pet, right? And then get a little something for it? It's really fun. Um, also, this Thursday, uh, we will be having yet another Facebook Live at 4 o'clock, and that will be with Joe G of Utrecht Paints, and he'll be doing a landscape painting. So definitely tune into that. 
Uh, Joe is super knowledgeable about paints, color mixing. I think it'll be a really great Facebook Live. Have a really great night, everyone. Stay creative, and we'll see you next time.